Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crap, it's crap, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. I've made these paper snowflakes before and I wondered if I could make one from wood, so that's what I'm going to attempt today. This video is the first in a series of seven and I'll be posting one daily from now leading up to Christmas. The first thing to do is make some clean plain shavings. Straight grain wood will give the best results. Camphor laurel can have interlock grain running in opposite directions. This piece is tearing out a little at the start, but I only need 180 mil or around seven inches. So there's plenty to work with using these shavings. I had to try a few different pieces till I found one that worked well. And you'll also need to make sure that your blade is very sharp in your plane. As I made more shavings, the section nearest to me lost the tear out, leaving very clean shavings, but now the opposite end began to get some pretty bad tear out. I swapped it out for another piece of camp laurel and I found a good piece. That should be enough to get going with. Next I'll start sticking them to a piece of backing paper. I need to make six squares and I was going to make them separately using A4 sheets, but instead I've decided to use a larger piece of paper and cut the pieces from that afterwards. I'll stick the shavings down using water-based varnish. I've done this before in previous videos, but not sticking it to paper. It gets a bit messy, but it's only water-based varnish, so it cleans up easy enough. I know this isn't a proper woodworking project. It's just a bit of fun, and there's nothing wrong with experimenting now and again. By making one big panel, the finished squares that I cut from it will have joins, but I'm not too worried about that. If I made them individually, I would have used full shavings across each square, and that's why I said at the start of the video that I needed the shavings to be 180 millimeters long. I used a rubber roller to flatten down any corners that were sticking up and I did this a few times while it was drying. When it was dry I gave it a light sand and another coat of water-based varnish. That's looking pretty good, now on to the other side. This paper has one shiny surface and I was slightly concerned that the shavings may not stick to it, so I sanded the surface first just to take the shine off it. After it was dry, I put a couple of coats of varnish on and this time I decided to use a matte finish so I also coated the first side again. I made this one test square using green card. I'm only gluing the shavings to one side and this should make an interesting contrast and it's also only half the work. I taped it around the edges so the varnish doesn't seep onto the back and in hindsight I think making individual squares is easier than making a full sheet.
Before I fold and cut the sheets, I'll do a practice one using a piece of paper and it should be clearer for you to follow along. First I'll fold across the diagonal and then I'll fold it again. Then with the folded end nearest to me, I'll use a piece of masking tape to set a margin. The tape is about half an inch. You could mark it on the paper, but using tape will be better when making the proper pieces. Now I'll make three marks along the folded edge nearest to me at an inch or 25 millimeters apart. Then using those marks, I'll make cuts from the tape margin and parallel with the longest edge. Next take the two opposite innermost wings and bring them back and fix them together. I'm using tape here but I will be using glue on the final pieces. Then flip the whole thing over and do the same to the next wings and so on. This is just one part but when all six pieces are made they'll be attached together to make the final snowflake. Now I'll do the same thing but with the actual pieces. I won't be able to fold them with a crease and that would ruin it anyway but I should be able to fold it just enough for it to work. They're not going to be super accurate but they'll be close enough. I know many of you don't like hot glue, but this is only a decoration and it's perfect for this use. I tried a different method on the green back piece. I marked all the cuts out with a pencil and then after cutting all of them, I erased the pencil marks afterwards. If I were to make any again, I would do it this way. It takes longer to mark it out, but it is neater.
Merry Christmas. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to come back tomorrow for the next episode of the 7 Day Scrapwood Challenge.